the semiconductor industry emerged out of Cold War competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. The first two major orders for semiconductors came from rocket and missile programs led by the Pentagon. The first was for the Apollo spacecraft, which would guide uh, the first astronauts to the moon. And the second was for an intercontinental ballistic missile program known as Minuteman II, which was intended to deliver atomic warheads to the Soviet Union. And from these earliest days, there was a deep and intimate relationship between the Pentagon and the semiconductor industry in the United States. Just a couple of years after the first semiconductors were invented, Gordon Moore, who would later go on to co-found Intel, realized that the number of transistors that could be put on a silicon chip was doubling every year, providing a doubling in computing power and a comparable decrease in electricity consumption as each year passed. Moore predicted that this trend of exponential growth would continue far into the future, providing vastly more computing power than anyone at the time imagined was possible. And this increase in computing power that the semiconductor industry provided made possible the rise of big tech firms and the pervasive computing that we rely on today. From the earliest days of the chip industry, American semiconductor firms relied on assembly and manufacturing plants in East Asia. In the early 1960s, Fairchild Semiconductor opened the first chip assembly plant in Hong Kong. And in 1968, it was followed when Texas Instruments opened their first assembly plant in Taiwan. And leaders in East Asia, especially in Taiwan, tried to attract semiconductor investment, not only wanting the jobs and the economic impact, but also hoping to tie the United States more closely uh, to their countries, hoping that the U.S. would thereby guarantee their security more credibly. Taiwan bet that even Americans who weren't willing to defend Taiwan for its own sake might be willing to defend Texas Instruments that are the plant on the island. Today, the most advanced ships have billions of tiny transistors carved into them. And each transistor is just a handful of nanometers wide. Each nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Building these ultra tiny transistors requires some of the most complicated tooling and precise uh, machinery ever invented, such as some of the most powerful lasers and the flattest mirrors humans have ever used. And outfitting a plant with the types of tooling and machinery needed to build advanced semiconductors is exorbitantly expensive. Today, an uh, advanced semiconductor facility can cost $20 billion to make, making them among the most expensive manufacturing facilities ever known. 90% of the most advanced processor chips today are fabricated in Taiwan, largely by the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, the world's most advanced chip maker, which towers above all its rivals in terms of the precision and the capacity it has to produce advanced ships. Most of TSMC's capacity is in Taiwan, a relatively small island that Communist Party leaders in Beijing consider a renegade province and that the United States has pledged to defend by force. And this, of course, introduces extraordinary vulnerabilities into our semiconductor supply, given that so much critical and advanced manufacturing capacity is just a seven minute flight from air bases in the People's Republic of China and an even shorter flight from many of the missile systems arrayed along the Chinese side of the Taiwan Strait.